Hello there and welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to my sewing room for a little bit of a fabric haul today. And I say fabric, but fabric and also buttons and some trims and little things I picked up at haberdasheries. Of course, I could not resist the opportunity to check out what was on offer in the fabric shops in London and I was quite surprised by just how expensive everything was over there, so I'll get into that today. Also, um, the things have changed in the last 10 years since I've been fabric shopping in London, even just like in uh, central London on Berwick Street, there used to be I don't know, eight or 10 fabric shops. And now there seems to be two or three. So things have really changed over there. And uh, I will never complain about the price of fabric here in the United States ever again. But let's go ahead and jump back in time to a surprisingly sunny day in London. And here we are on Goldhawk Road where there's a larger concentration of fabric shops or like the largest concentration of fabric shops. It's not exactly a fabric and textile district. It's kind of like an informal one. So there are all these textile shops that are right next to one another, which makes it very easy for the traveler. And you can get here via the Goldhawk Road tube station. As you can see, that's quite close to this, you know, centralized area where all these fabric shops are, or also the Shepherd's Bush Underground Station or the Shepherd's Bush Market Underground Station. And in this first shop I walked into, I immediately noticed this colorful wall of silks, mostly Dupioni silk here, and a lot of iridescent colors of it. But I immediately noticed that I didn't want to look at the prices of the taffetas because the Dupioni silk was 42 pounds a yard. And 42 to 45 kind of pounds a yard, which is about $53 a yard, which is about twice what I pay through um, Silk Baron here online in the US. So I was not about to fall for any of these silks and take them home with me. Then I started looking at the brocades and jacquards in the back and was in for another shock because this lovely red and black jacquard here was 87 pounds a yard. And then this gorgeous Lurex brocade that I very much would have liked was 200 pounds a yard. With Mood Fabrics here at home, I can pay around 50 to almost, you know, down to like $20 a yard, especially with discount codes and uh, sales that happen. So I usually only buy the $50 a yard fabrics when they're on sale anyway. So these prices seemed absolutely bonkers to me. Although the same brocade was available at the next store down for a mere 100 meter. So there's that. And I will keep saying yard instead of meter in this video. So you'll just have to forgive me. I'm so sorry. I do forget that I'm getting a tiny bit more because I'm paying per meter instead of per yard like I do here in the United States. So I did manage to find a few things that I still felt like were a bit of a bargain, but in general, the prices were even more uh, expensive than I was expecting. I expected things to be a little bit inflated. I did not think they would be twice or even three or four times what I pay here in the United States. So that was a bit of a wake up call for me. I thought, you know, there's a tax on things being in the big city, but not that that much of a price hike. So that was intense. And again, I will mention many times in this video, I'm so sorry for those of you who live here and this is just your reality. The first fabrics I actually picked up and fell for, and that seemed much more of a reasonable price, where I saw a stack of rayon linings in some gorgeous colors and patterns, and they were only nine pounds a yard, which was actually reasonable and about what I pay for nice rayon lighting with mood. So I didn't feel too bad about indulging in a couple of shades, including this iridescent teal and lime green color, like we're chartreuse and teal, which is a color palette I've been using quite a lot here in the studio recently. So I knew that I would put this into pretty immediate use with some of the projects I have coming up. So I grabbed this lovely color. I got two meters of this one. And then they had this color here, which is a sort of, I don't know, rusted rose terracotta and then light sage green color. This one is a twill, again, rayon lining here. Um, they were all rayon, which is nice. And then the last rayon lining I picked up was this delicious red buddy here, which has this little sort of sprinkle fleck of bright red and black. It's of course a cross weave of red and black. And again, this is something that I could put in a black jacket, in a red jacket, in so many different projects. So I thought this would be a uh, reasonably practical purchase to make if also quite pretty. I do find it hard to find uh, rayon lining that isn't just plain Bemberg lining. I do like Bemberg lining. It's very smooth and soft and silky to the touch. I don't like sewing with it. So I like wearing it, but I don't particularly like um, you know, sewing with it. So I do, if I can, like this one is a plain weave, but it's so gorgeous. I think you can see why I decided to work with it anyway. But this is technically like a jacquard weave with this pattern in it. And this one is a twill. And I find something with a little bit of a different weave, even in a round lining is easier to work with. So I try and buy jacquarded rayon linings anymore. Um, they do have some again at moodfabrics.com, so I can link to those below. But continuing along on Goldhawk Road, I stepped to another fabric shop that had some things that I was like minorly interested in, but there was, uh, the problem with these shops is sometimes you're the only one in there. So you get the full force of the salespeople. And this guy was very nice, but it's sometimes hard to tell between the genuine nice and people who are just being nice to you because they're trying to make a sale. And this fabric is nice. It was reasonably priced. I think this one was 30 
pounds a meter, which is quite expensive, but this is a nice sort of medium to quite heavy weight wool, almost like a coating wool, uh, but not quite that heavy, I guess. So like any somewhere between a suiting and a coating weight wool. And it's this lovely mossy green shade with lots of like flecks of different colors up close. It is a nice 100% wool fabric. It's just, I wanted something more of a forest green color. And yet the man talked me into getting some of this. Oh, you know what? It was 20 pounds a yard. I remember now because I gave him 40 pounds cash. Um, so it was 20 pounds a yard for this, which is again, quite expensive, but not too bad for a wool this nice. So um, at least I didn't get like completely scammed or anything, but I definitely think I would have saved my pennies for something, the color I was actually looking for if I wasn't being accosted by salespeople, which is not my favorite, especially as an introvert. So that's something to remember about Goldhawk Road and a lot of like smaller fabric shops in general, uh, I assume in other places in the world as well, is that you are going to have people either asking you what you're like, you don't really get left alone much. Um, even like if people are going to check in with you because I'm assuming, you know, they don't want you to like steal a bolt of fabric and run away, I guess. But also it just like, they can get quite pushy. What are you looking for? You know, and if you're just browsing, uh, it can be kind of hard to just like browse anonymously, which is kind of my favorite thing to do. So, uh, you know, more reasons why I enjoy shopping for fabric online. But again, I ended up with a very nice fabric. It's just not what I needed for making a forest green pencil skirt. But luckily a few of you have sent me forest green fabric. So thank you very much because now I'm good. Uh, but not because I found anything in London, but just because all of you were so kind. So I'll have to come up with a different project for this. Uh, it would again, make a nice pencil skirt and maybe a pencil skirt and a matching vest is what I was thinking maybe with this. But then on the other hand, maybe we'll make like an 18th century riding habit style jacket. You never know. Did I just kick the tripod? Yes, I did. Thank you very much for asking. Um, this one is quite pretty. This was a bit of a fancier shop. I don't have pictures and footage of all these shops because again, often I was alone in there with just me and the salespeople and I didn't want to be like videoing everything. So, but I didn't really see a ton in here that I was super interested in. And then I spotted this one. This one's a little bit higher up. So always look up in these places because you never know what's above you. But uh, this is a damask jacquard. You can't really see on camera what's happening here in olive green and black. This one is a polyester fabric, which we all know I'm not afraid of if it's spectacular. And this is a really gorgeous jacquard, again, that I thought would make a very nice suit. Um, shocking, I know, especially because I was looking at a lot of 18th century art. So I was really in the mood to fall for a jacquard, of course, and in black and green, naturally it caught me. I think this one was 16 pounds a yard. Again, this was in a very this is an expensive haul, thanks to the prices going on here in London. But uh, a lot of the jacquards and brocades I was seeing were in the 70 to 200 pound range. So to see a nice, um, good, like medium weight jacquard in this really pretty damask for only 16 pounds a yard was very tempting just compared to everything else I was seeing. I, I knew I wasn't gonna be able to afford most of the other fabrics that I had been falling for along this road. And of course, a meter is a little bit longer than a yard, which is something else that I have to remember when I'm shopping for these things. Cause like everything seems super overpriced, but at least I'm getting a little bit more per meter than I would get when paying per yard. And my last stop on Goldhawk Road was into the Misan Textiles location there. Um, Misan Textiles, it's like Misan and they have a textiles, a fabric, a shop, like all the names of the different stores are kind of weird. But this one on Goldhawk Road seems to be their discounted location, like the sale section from the other stores. So they have a like bargain room upstairs, bargain. Um, and then they have everything clearly, the best thing about this is Misan is more organized. Things are a little bit more exp expensive. I went to two locations. I'll talk about the other one as well. Um, but this one in Goldhawk Road, compared to the other stores on Goldhawk Road, <laughs> everyone's a little bit less pushy and uh, everything is super organized and the prices are clearly marked. My biggest pet peeve about shops in general, but fabric shopping and haberdashers in London is when the prices are not clearly marked, so you have to ask. Um, which means, of course, you are interacting then with a the salesperson who can then try and upsell you on everything. So I really prefer when the prices are just marked and I can make my decisions without pressure. So that's something I really appreciate about Misan. And they had, of course, fabrics for a little bit less than what was the going rate on the rest of Goldhawk Road. So I appreciated that as well. And this fabric, I actually have seen it on Misan's website, so I can link it below for you. But they seem to be showing the outside of the fabric as this side, which is that pretty? Yes, I agree with you. It's this blue and orange and black iridescent fabric that creates this kind of mauve shade. But I fell for the other side, which is far sparklier and more metallic. So I think I'll be using the backside out for this one. And it looks almost purple on camera, which is quite fun because it is orange and blue in person. And this is kind of an abstract animal print. 
this was in the kind of brocades and jacquards rack area at Misan. Um, not not in the upstairs discount area, but just in the regular main floor area. And this one was 25 pounds a meter. So again, half or less than the price of other brocades and jacquards I was seeing around. And of course, I did want to pick up a couple of special things while on my trip because, you know, I wasn't going to be buying a lot of other things. I'm, I'm there for fabric and oddities. These are my two areas of interest. So I picked up this gorgeous iridescent fabric and it won't be the last iridescent fabric I'll be talking about today. And again, do I want to make a suit out of this? Yes, something very like Terry Mugler sort of suit where I could wear the jacket with a black pencil skirt or a black dress and I could wear the skirt with a black sweater, you know, or black velvet jacket with this as a pencil skirt. Versatility, honestly. But those were my purchases from Goldhawk Road. Again, those linings, that wool that I sort of didn't mean to buy but got talked into. I'm too introverted to go into these places. I just get intimidated and want, you know, anything to end uh, nicely. So I just, I'm sure, here, and then I can, you know, leave. If I make a purchase, then I'm allowed to kind of like end the social interaction. And as someone who uh, really needs to be retrained in how to be a human, uh, that was what I was after most in that instance. But yes, Goldhawk Road in review. You know, it's easy to get to, so you have a couple of tube stations that are quite close, so it's easy to find. All the fabric shops are on this same little, like, zone, so you can just walk up one side of the street and down the other and hit all the fabric shops. They're really quite localized, and they do have some absolutely beautiful and gorgeous things, but the prices, in my opinion, there's just no comparison to what I can pay for things through the United States compared to what was happening on Goldhawk Road. It's, like, worth it to take a weekend to New York or to just really uh, plan your purchasing for like the next year and just, you know, bite the bullet. And it might be more like cost lucrative to pay for the crazy expensive international shipping than to actually buy these things in London itself because the prices were bonkers. So in review, I, I don't think it's a can't miss it sort of opportunity. Um, if you're in London for a couple of days, there are a lot of museums that are free to visit that I think are a better, you know, uh, thing to use your time on than trying to go fabric shopping. It's not a, a destination for textiles. I mean, they have gorgeous suiting wools. They are going to be hecka expensive. Um, so if you are looking for something for a very special project for a wedding suit, something like that, then sure. But, and they have, you know, they have some special things, obviously. But to me, the prices and then the pushy salespeople really pull the experience down for me because it's hard to have like a good time when you're being like uh, accosted everywhere and kind of pressured and then pressured to buy very expensive fabric. So it's not like you're getting a deal. Let me know if you've had a different experience shopping on Goldhawk Road and what are your tips for shopping environments like that? Because clearly I'm not confident enough to uh, go shopping in this sort of environment. But the next sort of main fabric shopping area that I have frequented in the past, back when I was studying abroad in London. Um, I studied at a school called American Intercontinental University. It's a, like an international school that partners with a lot of universities in the U.S. to do international studies programs or um, like study abroad programs. So I partnered through CSU, Colorado State University, to AIU in London. They had a campus on Marlebone High Street, right around the corner from the Wallace Collection, right around the corner from Oxford Street. And that location is actually no longer there. I think they have switched everything on to online, which obviously the fashion program wouldn't work the same way because I had pattern drafting and hat making classes that wouldn't exactly work online. But being that my classes were in central London, that meant the nearest fabric shops were actually down off Regent Street and off Berwick Street, which there used to be quite a few fabric shops on Berwick Street over here. And of course, that means you can pop into Liberty and Dream before you go fabric shopping. But there used to be eight or 10 fabric stores over in this little area. And now the cloth house is gone. There used to be a couple of silk shops over here. Not anymore. So we were down to just a couple of stores. And the first haberdashery I popped into over here was Fan New Trimmings. This, as the name would imply, is a store full of lots of trim, lace, sequins, fringe, feathers, buttons, all those sorts of fun things. I didn't pick up a ton. I did fall for these little brass cicadas because how could I not? Um, these would make great earrings, except that they are quite heavy. So instead of using these for jewelry, I think I'm going to use them as poles on handbags, on like the zippers of handbags. I have a couple of handbag projects coming up soon that I thought these would make great poles for. So I grabbed a few of those to have. Uh, I grabbed what they had left, which was four. And these were eight pounds 50 each, I think they were, or 875 each. Kind of expensive, but again, antique brass cicadas. I wasn't going to leave those behind. So they seemed like a special and fun thing to grab. And then the other thing I picked up at Fan New Trimmings was this gold lace. I just fell for it. You know, it's just, I don't have a project in mind for this. So I just grabbed a couple of meters because it wasn't too expensive. I don't remember how much this one cost, but it wasn't too bad. And it was just so delicate and pretty that I thought it would look 
really nice, something 17th century inspired perhaps that I might make in the future. So I grabbed some of this just to stick in the stash. And the next shop in Soho I popped into was Borovic Fabrics. This is another store that's quite organized inside. Um, I did interact with the salespeople here. They were a little more chill, which was nice. Um, not as insistent, but they were definitely kind of talking me into things still. Um, not as bad though. So after, after Goldhawk Road, anything seemed mild compared to that. But I did fall for a couple of fabrics there. And I think you'll see why this first one had to come home with me. <sighs> This is basically like a scarab beetle wing fabric. This is, again, like other fabrics I've used in the past and been frustrated with. Um, this is iridescent mylar threads woven with a softer black polyester as well. And this is actually a bit of a ribbed fabric and it's a little bit stretchy. Um, I'm not exactly positive the design I want to use for this, but I just knew that this beetle wing fabric, which matches my multi-chrome eyeshadow quite well, um, had to come with me. It comes in multiple different colors. I, of course, got the black and iridescent colorway here because it's green iridescent and looks like some sort of a peacock feather or beetle. Um, so I grabbed two meters of this. I think it was 24 pounds a meter. Again, kind of expensive compared to what I normally pay for fabric, but very inexpensive compared to the rest of the fabric I had seen around London. Fell for it thinking, oh, surely that's 124 pounds a meter. And the fact that it was only 24 meant that I grabbed two meters. Um, so I'm excited to try and make a dress out of this. I do think I want to make something a little bit fancier with this one. This is kind of the epitome, epitome of me in a fabric. So I want to make something a little bit more structured, I think, with this. Something where, in a couture-ish way, where I make a bustier kind of top and inner structure to build the dress around and perhaps even drape the top of it so that I can have the neckline be a little bit more open. I won't have to wear a bra with it because I'll have a built-in sort of situation going on. So that is going to be quite a project with a mock-up definitely involved in the future, but look at that. Look at it. Ooh. It's so pretty. So, well, we had to have that, didn't we? Yes. And then the other fabric I grabbed from that same shop was this one here. It looks kind of like a dark berry magenta here on camera, but it is black and navy and magenta pink woven together in this kind of, mm, I guess we would call this a taffeta, sort of a metallic lurex taffeta. Um, but again, I always fall for more taffetas than I have ideas to make taffeta things. But again, I think this would make an absolutely delicious jacket with some different embellishment ideas I have in mind for this. Um, but I think a sharp Mugler inspired blazer for evening with this, with the embellishments and a black velvet skirt. Perfect. Again, all these dinners and nights at the jazz club that doesn't exist that I need some person to come out of nowhere and take me to. So... Hopefully I have a very glamorous future ahead of me to wear all these things to. And the last place I popped into over on Berwick Street that day, just because I couldn't get to everywhere on my list because everything closes at like five o'clock, which is my, one of my biggest complaints about the UK. Why is everything closed so early? I guess in America, I'm used to every, all the stores that close at like 9 p.m. because we don't really appreciate the labor of, of people and we underpay everyone and make them work long hours. So I'm used to everything being open till 9 p.m. 10 p.m. So the fact that everything closes at five was a disappointment to me. But in any case, I made it into this other location of Misan that was here. This is their central London location. So I popped into here and this uh, is more of their retail location as opposed to the discount location that I was in before on Goldhawk Road. So everything in here was even more expensive um, or full price rather. And there were some absolutely delicious jacquards and brocades in here that I definitely fell for, but everything was quite expensive. So I really had to just pick one to splurge on because there was no way I was going to be able to get everything I love, which is fair. Um, usually I don't have a ton of restraint when it comes to fabric because luckily this is my vocation. So I can't feel too terrible about grabbing fabric because making stuff kind of my job. So I don't, I don't, you know, tend to show a ton of restraint in a fabric shop, but with these prices, I had to. But the fabric that I just could not leave behind was this one. And on camera, it just looks like subtly iridescent black fabric. But uh, if I show you the other side, Maybe I'll show it better on camera. So one side is like white, almost lilac. It looks lilac, it's actually white. And the other side is black. And it has this tiny, tiny micro dot of what's that? That's right, iridescent Lurex threads. So no surprise uh, there. And again, wouldn't this make the sharpest, nicest blazer ever? Uh, especially with like the lapels in the turn back. I, I mean, I can't decide which side I like more because this lilac -y iridescent side is also quite pretty, but of course black is a little bit more wearable for me. But this fabric, 
was just too gorgeously behind. I think I got two meters of this. It might have been a meter and a half because this one was 42 pounds a yard, which is this USD hand. Hecka expensive, but I had never seen anything like this fabric. It's like a nice suiting fabric, but instead of in wool, it's an iridescent micro dot. So imagine this blazer worn over the scarab beetle kind of dress from the other fabric. I just, we all know that I need to be like some sort of a metamorphosis insect evil queen. And these, these are the fabrics that are gonna help me do it. So yes, Mison, definitely my favorite fabric shop that I came across in the UK. I'm sure there are other ones that are nice as well. There are, I'm sure, other fabric shops that are outside of central London that I didn't get to that are quite good. Uh, I, I saw there might be a couple up in the Hampstead kind of area, uh, past Camden. I'm not sure. I didn't make it to everywhere that I could have because I have other things on my mind. A lot of museums to visit and only so much time. Um, and of course I had already blown all my money. But if you are London or UK based, do tell me what your favorite fabric shops and haberdasheries are in the comments below so I can add them onto my list to visit in the future because I'm always looking for more spots. I do wish I could have gone to Top Fabric UK. Uh, they have a lot of gorgeous fabrics, but again, a very pricey and they are, I think, by appointment only. So. That's too much adulting to figure that one out. And I, if I could walk in, sure. But um, between not having any more money left and having to make an email or a phone call, it didn't happen this trip. There was one more shot that I wanted to get to that I didn't get a chance to that first day in Soho. And that was McCulloch and Wallace. They had moved locations since I had last been there. I went there all the time for hat making materials back when I was studying in London. And I remember the shop being very different. And so when I got there, I was like, what is happening? Uh, they've obviously moved locations. And this location is... Less cramped, I mean, still cramped, but a little bit less cramped than it was before, so that's kind of nice. But I did grab some wool yarns here, uh, kind of like embroidery yarns. I don't know if these are for making like crochet and knit projects, but I'm gonna be using them for embroidery projects. And then I grabbed some trims that I just liked and didn't really have a plan for, including this iridescent mylar fringy trim, which I thought might go with some of the fabrics I had picked up. So I grabbed this because it was only like, I think this was only like three pounds a meter. So I grabbed a couple meters of that. It was actually probably the more, one of the more inexpensive things I purchased. Um, then there was this black lace here, which kind of reminded me of Gothic cathedrals. And I just thought was so fine and pretty. It's not always easy to find unique and more lightweight laces here in the US. So I fell for this black lace that looks kind of like peacock feathers or Gothic cathedral windows. And so I grabbed a couple meters of that one. This one was a little bit more pricey. Um, and then I grabbed this black lace trim as well, which again, I thought was very pretty. And of course, black lace, I will of course always find a use for, so I couldn't feel bad about that one. Then I grabbed this metallic copper trim here. It's very uh, metally feeling a trim. Uh, I don't think it's actual wire. I think it's probably some kind of metallized polyester thread, no idea. But this bright copper color, because again, I have some copper projects coming up and I thought this might come, might come in handy for those. And I grabbed this flat leather trim in a sort of pewter color with a silver iridescent snakeskin kind of print on it. And this is for, again, a specific project that is still as of now a secret project. So uh, I might be using this for something coming up here soon. So this was actually practical, but I found a couple of trims that were just things for the stash that were quite fun. And then I do have a couple of jackets that I wanted different hooks for. So they have these larger skirt hooks in both uh, like a brass color and a copper color. So I grabbed some of these as well over there at McCulloch and Wallace. And the last things I have to show you today, um, sort of more haberdashery are these vintage buttons that I picked up from a seller, a little stall at Portobello Road Market. There's some lovely ladies selling all these vintage buttons. And so I was going through a bunch of them. They had a lot of nice glass buttons, a lot of gorgeous buttons really, um, and not too bad. These ones here, these are like a larger size, in interesting color, sort of greenish gold glass button here. These were 650 and let's see, these ones are 650 as well. This is six black glass buttons here. So the prices weren't too bad, especially because uh, online, these are some like kind of Bakelite looking square buttons. These ones were 850, so a little bit more expensive. And then these glass buttons here were the priciest at 12 pounds um, for six. But these are the kind of things that I use for the blazers made out of these fancy fabrics. So I wanted to go ahead and pick these up. And sometimes for glass buttons online, in the US, uh, either through Mood or on Etsy, I can pay, sometimes they will charge $6 per button. You know, the glass buttons can be quite expensive. So this seemed like quite a good deal and quite a fun, unique little thing to get while at Portobello Road. So that is my haul from shopping for fabric in London, fabric and extras, fabric and goodies in London. Um, I did pick up a few other souvenirs while I was away. I got a couple of prints that are actually above this mirror here now. Grab some tea at Fortnum & Mason. May have sprang for a Dries Van Noten perfume at Selfridges. Again, 
Uh, it was slightly tempered by the price range of the things going on there. I am so sorry to those of you who live in the UK and have fabric that is this expensive. I really can understand how you really have to plan projects and can't do things as spontaneously because fabric is quite an investment over there. And uh, I, I, I don't I don't know how to help you. I'm so sorry. But I am very happy with the mostly iridescent things I was able to pick up and I'm excited to turn them into clothing in the future. And thank you as always for watching today. I'll be back here with more sewing, vintage fashion, costuming, and crafting real soon. So I'll see you then. Bye.